Since its release, Splatoon 3's search popularity has gone down to under a tenth of its peak in under a year, while shooters like Fortnite have still managed to maintain around a fifth of their peak popularity over five years later. So how does the game that won Multiplayer Game of the Year award in 2022 manage to lose over 90% of its popularity in less than a year? There are many reasons for why this decline has been happening, which I'm going to explain in this video. So here are the 5 main problems Splatoon 3 is facing that are hindering its relevancy and enjoyment. With the first problem being what every new player experiences right out the gate, which is Splatoon 3's high barrier of entry. For a new player to get into the game, they have to commit a good chunk of time to unlock some pretty basic features of Splatoon. When first starting off, the player is stuck to only being able to play Turf War up until level 10. And while the main goal of this is to get the player accustomed to the game before hopping into ranked modes, the time it takes for the player to reach this level is longer than you may think. Even in the best case scenario, where the player wins every game of Turf War, it would take at least 56 games to unlock ranked modes. As you can imagine, this requires a lot of time for a new player to dedicate just to try to unlock these extra modes and could deter some people right from the start to committing to the game. Having to play around 15 to 20 matches or so before unlocking ranked sounds a lot more reasonable and is plenty enough for a new player to get a feel for the basics. But this issue doesn't stop there. There are also more minor problems like salmon run rewards taking forever to buy due to rare shell drop rates, or the gear system that's very hard for new players to master, or making gear sets early on without ability chunks and drink tickets takes a very long time for beginners until they grind salmon run. We can see that for new players in general, there's a huge grind for many aspects of Splatoon 3 which can deter new players from playing the game for that long. But even for the players that do stick around, the experience of simply trying to play Splatoon 3 is hell thanks to Nintendo's extremely poor netcode and online experience. For a new player to just play a game of Turf War, they need to drop at least $20 a year for Nintendo's Switch Online subscription service, something unheard of for most multiplayer online games today. But okay, maybe it's just a really high quality online service with exceptional netcode, right? Wrong. It's evident that connection matters most in the shooter genre, where milliseconds can mean the difference between killing or dying. You would want your weapons and features to function properly, and for your connection to be stable. Let's get a bit technical here and explain why Nintendo's online service is the worst. Keep in mind that I'm not a professional on netcode technology, so feel free to correct any mistakes I make in the comments. Anyways, let's start with the game's netcode architecture. A common misunderstanding of Splatoon 3's online connection is that they use regional servers which every player in the lobby connects to in order to play. This is the system most online games nowadays use. The benefit of this system is that each player is responsible for their own connection to that server, so if they disconnect, no one in the lobby is going to be affected by it and that the server itself is optimized to maintain the most stable connection possible. This system in practice for games like Fortnite allows for games with minimal hiccups at around 20 to 25 ping. However, Splatoon 3 servers use the outdated peer-to-peer -peer system, where the server is actually just a player in the lobby known as the host, usually the player who joins the lobby or creates the room first. Now the problem with this system is that if the host has a poor connection, this snowballs onto everyone else in the lobby, meaning that the whole lobby does too. Which is why we see clips of entire lobbies getting evaporated all at once, and why games can feel so laggy at times, since you basically have to pray that the host has a stable connection, or else everyone else is screwed as well. Another important issue is the game's tick rate. For those who don't know, the tick rate of a game is the rate at which the game updates are sent to the server or in Splatoon 3's case, are sent to the host. A game update can be that you shot your weapon, for example. The highest tick rates can be found in games like Valorant, with tick rates of 128 hertz, or 128 updates a second, with the lower end games having tick rates of around 30 hertz like Fortnite. Now what would you assume is the tick rate of a game we're paying $20 a year to play online for is? 60? Maybe 30? How about 16 hertz? Yeah, it's that low. This creates interactions like this, where I thought I'd be out of range of this charger shot and that the player on the right would just die, but the host still considered us in close enough distance for the both of us to get spotted. And that's just one example, there are many other instances where this low of a tick rate affects gameplay. And it's unacceptable that $20 a year gets you this old and outdated laggy online system. Finally on top of this, the new system implemented where a lobby will shut down if someone disconnects early on in a game leads to some players just simply rage quitting as soon as the opposing team acquires an advantage and completely ruins everyone's experience. 
As a whole, Nintendo's online system is a complete disaster in my opinion, and no doubt steers many people away from wanting to play the game when all that happens is that they constantly get disconnected. It's almost a necessity to use a LAN adapter to connect through Ethernet to get an at least bearable experience playing Splatoon 3 for both you and your teammates if you're the host. But even if you manage to not disconnect, the experience on the game's maps isn't great either. There are many consistent issues with Splatoon 3's map design, mainly being their lack of openness and flank options, which creates extremely stalled out and linear games where not much happens. This means that when a team wants to push through the map's choke points, which are basically parts of the map where the team needs to pass through to make it to the objective, they need to basically overpower the other team in numbers or in specials, leaving basically no room for strategic routes or any other game plan, making games feel super linear. The defenders also end up being hurt by these lack of flanks, as they would be able to use these spots themselves to back out of mid and reposition where they might be needed. Now, why is this a problem, you may ask? Mainly the fact that this doesn't promote variety. This sort of map design mostly benefits backline weapons since they only have to hold one main choke point and with the general tightness of the maps, they have a way easier time keeping people pinned in their place. However, most aggressive Slayer weapons end up hurting from this map design, seeing as they can't ambush on an alternate flank and feel restricted any time they want to push. We can see this heavily in maps like Mincemeat Metalworks, with the sheer amount of uninkable walls and minimal blocks to create any sort of alternate pushes which as I said before, limits the team's options heavily and creates linear games. But what's even crazier is that the map designs we saw in the trailers for Splatoon 3 had much better and more open designs, making people question why they didn't just keep it that way. I'd keep in mind though that it's never too late for Nintendo to rework the maps as they did in Splatoon 2 to make them better based on community feedback. For a more in-depth video on the state of Splatoon 3's map design, I highly suggest checking out Prochara's video on it. He did an amazing job explaining it. Now even past all these issues, the most skilled and dedicated players still have to deal with another major issue, being the game's ranked and matchmaking system. Splatoon's highest rank you can get is known as X-Rank, but the description itself states, it's to test your limits against the best of the best in extreme battles. You would assume this rank would be highly prestigious and only achievable by the top players. In Splatoon 2, this was kind of the case. To unlock X-Rank, you would need to make it all the way to S plus 10, which ensured the player was capable of winning in the S plus environment, and it took me a long while to get. But in Splatoon 3, it was made a lot more accessible, unlocking only at S plus 0. And you might think at first that since X rank uses a power system, that the matchmaking would still sort the players into the correct skill brackets so it wouldn't really be a problem. But unfortunately, this is far from the case. By letting people who are only S plus 0 into X rank, since these players aren't quite the skill level to be able to survive in S+, they wind up reaching super low power rankings in X-Rank while still being paired with the players in upper and middle power levels, which hurts both the high skilled players and the low skilled ones. There was even a statistic that found the average power of an X-Rank player was around 1800, which in Splatoon 2 would literally remove you from X-Rank. Splatoon 3 basically downgraded the ranking system Splatoon 2 had by making S-Rank too accessible to lower level players. They would either have to massively improve the matchmaking to match people against others of their actual skill level, but would likely lead to longer queue times, or make X-Rank harder to get like in Splatoon 2. There's no doubt that this issue is again reducing players' will to play the game when they're not getting matched correctly for both sides of the skill spectrum. Finally, there's the most universal reason why we see games fall off in popularity, which is simply the lack of content. Now to be fair, Splatoon 3 has massively improved its content flow with seasonal updates, challenges, big run, table turf and more. However, many features are still quite incomplete or just flat out missing. In private battles for example, the only customization options we get are to remove secondary abilities. That's literally it. Meanwhile, games like Fortnite have creative mode, giving the player infinite possibilities to test weapons, create maps, and all sorts of other features, which we've seen gives a lot of success to the game. And while it wouldn't really be possible to implement something on that level into Splatoon, especially with the hardware limitations of the Switch, adding more match customization options similar to challenges such as fog, extra jump height, custom kits, and more would give players an insane amount of content with minimal effort from Nintendo, giving content creators new ideas, being able to make custom tournaments, and more. There were also features that were flat out removed for seemingly no reason, such as the mini games from the previous Splatoon games, being Squid Beats, Squid Ball, Squid Racer, and Squid Jump. These gave players an extra pastime and were honestly super fun to play, especially Squid Beats in my case. 
and I don't see why Nintendo just decides to eliminate them completely as if they were hurting anybody just by existing. All these issues seem to explain the big decline in interest we've seen for Splatoon 3. And while it's a shame these issues are so prevalent, it's important to keep in mind the various things that Splatoon 3 is doing right, such as the massively improved story mode and side order DLC coming up, the improved quality of life changes, and features. The list goes on. Splatoon 3 is certainly not dead, and many issues can be massively improved if Nintendo is willing to fix them, which could lead to Splatoon 3 going back on the rise, and it's important for us as a community to address these issues so they can come to light and hopefully be fixed. I also want to announce that I'll be opening a Discord server and channel memberships at 5,000 subscribers, so sub up if you want that to happen. And also, be sure to follow my Twitter. What do you think are Splatoon 3's biggest problems? Let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to read them. I'll see you all later. I love you all.